Hello, Oracles. Oracle Tim here from Oracle Investments. Today we're going to go over and recap what Elon said last night on his interview with the Wall Street Journal. Let me know in the comments if any of you had an opportunity to watch it last night. Um, I took out most of the political stuff. Um, I do. I am interested in some of it, um, just at least his feelings on it. So if you are interested as well, I put the entire link in the description below so you can watch the entire interview. I just tried to break out some pieces of what I thought was interesting to comment on those for you guys. So let's get right into it for you. I'm at, um, I'm at uh, the Tesla uh, Giga Texas factory um, that we're about to complete. Um, so yeah, what you see behind me is um, the factory basically. Um, we have the uh, office space and the factory kind of uh, together. So um, I think this is kind of important that uh, we don't have uh, ivory tower management or engineering and that the management and engineering is uh, as close to the factory as possible so um uh, yeah so you can see what's going on in the factory and um and stay grounded now the two key takeaways i took from this is one he states that uh giga austin is almost complete we kind of knew this we knew it was about there but to hear him say it is good to hear and the other piece is is that his management and uh, the engineering management isn't in an ivory tower. They all are there on the floor. We've heard this before. Elon works on the floor with the people. Nobody is above anybody else there. They just do it all together. And when there's a problem that needs to get solved, everybody's right there to do it. And that is why Tesla can move so quickly and they're so agile because they don't have to worry about running so far to get somebody from this management office to come out and work on something Management's there on the floor. Hey, got a problem. Let's fix it. Done. And they move on. I wanted to ask you, say tomorrow you get a phone call from Joe Biden and he says... <laughs> I think that's unlikely, but sure. <laughs> okay. You know, he, he just gives you a call and he says, you know, I haven't been talking a lot about Tesla lately, but, you know, what do you, what do you need from this bill? What are your needs? What do you answer him? Um, well, I, I, I have to be, I mean, to be totally frank, we don't think about it at all, really. Okay. It, um, it might be better. Honestly, it might be better if the, if the bill doesn't pass. Because um, sometimes the criticism of Tesla is like, hey, Tesla gets all these subsidies. But uh, it's worth noting that for the, the vehicle purchase tax credit, the $7,500, Tesla stopped getting that like two years ago. So we've, uh, we, whereas um, uh, everyone else, I think, except for GM, still gets the $7,500 tax credit. So all of our you know, sales this year, and I think last year were, uh, had nothing to do with the, 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 the tax credit because we were no longer eligible because we'd made so many electric cars. Uh, Tesla's made roughly two thirds of all the electric cars in the United States. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure most people are aware of that. Um, so yeah, so Tesla's made basically twice as many electric vehicles as the rest of industry combined. Um, and we, we don't need the $7,500 tax credit um, I would say, honestly, I would just can this whole bill. Don't pass it. That's my recommendation. This is a big piece that is understated a lot. Uh, people are like, oh, you know, Tesla's got these EV tax credits. You know, Teslas are selling so well because, you know, of the credits you get. But Tesla doesn't get these credits anymore. Um, I mean, they get the overall, but they don't get that discount like they used to. It's been, you know, as Elon said, two years. So realistically, you know, Tesla has been growing as they've been growing without this. They don't need this at all. Um, sure, could it help? Of course it would, but it's gonna help everybody else as well. And not to say it's not good because it could help the EV revolution even further, but the more you dig into it, the more you realize that Tesla doesn't need this. It's the other automakers that need this. And so if it doesn't pass, it doesn't pass. And I gotta say, I, I don't care either way, one way or the other, other than the fact that I would benefit from the uh, tax credit because I'm purchasing a Model Y and a Cybertruck, so I would like it. But otherwise, Tesla doesn't need it. They don't. What is the biggest improvement we can make to the U.S. infrastructure? What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you say? We've got to do something uh, to deal with the extreme traffic, uh, which I think is some combination of double decorating freeways um, and building tunnels. Um, but if, if we don't do something, um, 
we will be stuck in traffic for forever. Um, and uh, as autonomy vehicle, uh, autonomous vehicles come to the fore, um, and it's it's easier to drive without going through the pain of of having to drive, to drive yourself, which which is absolutely coming, uh, and will be one of the biggest transformations uh, ever in human civilization. One of the things I always pay attention to with Elon is his transparency with his level of confidence for things, and you know when you look at uh, you know his different projects that he has going on. Yes, he's going to do this. Sometimes it's not in the same time frame that he says, but his level of confidence for it actually happening is what I go by because he always comes through. So when he's talking about the autonomy taking over and revolutionizing everything, you know, he's confident. He's like, this is going to happen. And that's what I pay attention to. Not how, when it's going to happen, not, um, you know, what it's going to take to make it happen, but his confidence on this is going to happen. And you'll see later on that there's a couple other things that, you know, he's transparent about and his level of confidence of it happening and what it means for the future of Tesla. And quite honestly, as an investor, that's what I'm paying attention to. So when we're talking about valuation for the future, when I see Elon's confidence in certain things, that's where I can say, all right, this is more than likely going to happen so I feel that this valuation is justified for this reason. What, what about, what about the, the support, though, for the charging network? I mean, there are, there are parts of this bill and, and... No? No. I mean, you know, do, do we need support for gas stations? Uh, we don't. So uh, there's, no, there's no need for, this, uh, for, for support for a charging network. I would delete it. Delete. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm literally, I'm literally saying get rid of all subsidies. And but also for oil and gas. If you think about also how this affects your competitors, is that, is that impact how some of your view on this? Maybe they need it. I, I don't know. Uh, but I, I think just generally uh, I'm in favor of deleting subsidies. I mean, when we started Tesla, there were, there were no EV subsidies at all. And gasoline was super cheap. Uh, we did not anticipate any subsidies. Uh, that, that came later. And, and that came... the. The $7,500 tax credit came as a result, not of Tesla activity, but of, of General Motors lobbying for it. Um, I, lo I love Elon here just nonchalantly flexing, but he's, he's absolutely right. I mean, Tesla came from a point where EVs were shunned, weren't even thought of, laughed at, and they created themselves and got to where they are without any help from anyone else. Why do they need it now? They don't. But guess who does? Legacy automakers. They need the help. You know, if Tesla was able to do it, coming from nothing, why do these legacy automakers need all of this assistance when they're so much bigger, technically, than Tesla? You know, let them try to survive on their own. If they can't make it, that's the natural evolution of things. Stop giving that handout to the people who just are struggling and not even trying to make an effort, and you're just helping them out because. You know, these... I won't get political, but... Yeah, let them try to survive on their own without the subsidies and see what happens. But speaking of the Tesla bot, I, I, I know you've talked about the importance of creating this bot for the future of AI. Tell me a little bit about where you're at with this project and uh, what we can expect uh, in the next coming months. With the Tesla autopilot or full self-driving, we're effectively, I think, creating the most uh, advanced practical AI for navigating the real world. Um, and you, you can always think of Tesla as like the world's biggest robot company um, or, or semi-sentient robot company. So then, so, you know, so we have, the car is kind of a robot on four wheels. And, and so then, well, you know, we could probably take that same technology and, and put it in a humanoid robot and have that robot be useful. You know, so, so essentially for to, to have the humanoid part, we, we need to develop some custom uh, actuators and sensors, um, and then essentially use the Tesla full self-driving or, or autopilot, or just generally speaking, real-world navigation uh, AI in in the humanoid robot. And I think this could be quite profound. Um, I don't know exactly when we will get we will get this right, but we will get it right. And again, this is something that many of us knew, but I wanted to reiterate that. 
FSD, what they're creating right now, is the robot on wheels. And the intelligence and AI that goes behind that will inevitably be the base foundation behind what runs the AI bot. Because, you know, you can get all the cars and vehicles and how those drive, but actual human interaction is a lot more diverse. Um, so when you can get all of the knowledge that you get from FSD as a base structure foundation, running it through Dojo, then you can put it into the AI bot to have it do basic human labor work. That, you know, is going to change things. And again, getting back to Elon's confidence level, you know, he's transparent with, we are confident we are going to make it happen. We just don't know when. And so this is something they are working on. He has obviously other priorities, but that's why they're hiring so many people to work on AI right now, because he knows it's coming in the future. That's what he's gui guiding us towards. And it's just a matter of, you know, solving the, the problems. We're still at the very base foundation level of it right now, but it's coming. And another reason why investing for me and Tesla in the future is so important. Can you tell me what's gonna happen on 12.9? I, nothing as far as I know. I, I don't know where this came from. Um, I think it's just, this is just one of those memes that, I don't know, it came out of nowhere. But uh, as far as I know, nothing. Um, but maybe something will happen that I'm not aware of. All right. So Elon says nothing is coming on 12.9. Maybe he does have a secret up his sleeve that he's not sharing and he's just playing it off. Who knows? Um, he says nothing's coming. Nothing's coming. I don't think if anything did come, it's going to be anything major. So we'll see. Uh, I know the only thing we're expecting this week possibly are sales numbers out of China. Maybe that randomly falls on 12.9. That's it, but womp womp, nothing going on for 12.9. <laughs> Cybertruck. Uh, Cybertruck's gonna be an incredible product. I think it's, it may, it may, it may be our, our best product ever. And I think it probably will be. Um, uh, it, it has a lot of new technology, so it's a, it's a hard car to make. Um, I bet it will be awesome. Uh, and um, I think I've said before that you know we're aiming for volume production in, in 2023. Um, and I, I will provide a, a more detailed product update at the Tesla earnings call that you know at the early next year. So um, I, w I wish it could be sooner, but but that's that's most likely uh, when it happens. Um, It'll be something really special, you know, like just one of those kind of rare products that happens once in a while. That's that's really special. So, of course, you know, we've talked about the Cybertruck a lot recently. I'm just excited to see what is all this new technology that they're going to put into it. Uh, you know, Tesla has always wowed us with what they have put into their vehicles. And, you know, knowing about the tank style driving crab walk, uh, solar panel tonneau cover, these little things like that for it, what else are they going to put into the Cybertruck that is just going to separate that from you know, the Rivian, the Hummer? Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think other technology that they're going to put into the Cybertruck will be that will just blow our minds. How are you pushing that project along? What happens? So Neuralink, we, um, we, we have uh, Neuralink's working well in um, in monkeys, um, and we were actually do, doing um, just a, a lot of testing um, and and just confirming that it's it's very safe and reliable, and uh, and that it, the the Neuralink device can be removed safely. Um, people may have seen the uh, demo that we we, we published uh, earlier this year, the video of a monkey playing uh, the video game Pong uh, telepathically using the Neuralink in its in its uh, in its in its brain. Um, and uh, it's completely wireless, uh, charges inductively. So basically, the monkey looks completely normal, and yet is playing a video game telepathically, um, which is, I think, quite quite profound. Um, we will have, uh, we, we hope to have this in our first humans, which will be uh, people that have um, severe spinal cord injuries, like tetraplegics, quadriplegics, uh, next year, uh, pending uh, FDA approval. And um, and I should say our, our standards for implanting the device are substantially higher than than what the FDA requires. Um, just as our standards for safety with Tesla are much higher than what uh, uh, the uh, U.S. government requires. I think there's there's something that's that's I think pretty cool. And, and I I do want to say that I'm I'm very you know 
emphasis on cautiously optimistic ab about this. I think, I think we have a chance with Neuralink of being able to restore uh, full body functionality to someone who has a spinal cord injury. Um, meaning, I think, I think we have a chance, I emphasize a chance of being able to allow someone who um, cannot walk or use their arms uh, to be able to, to walk again. Another big one for me is, this is more about Elon's confidence level is, you know, open and honest about Neuralink and saying, hey, you know, um, we plan and we think that we are going to be able to solve, you know, paralysis, spinal cord injuries, things like this are huge. And, you know, he's like, you know, I I'm getting more and more confident. So the more he sees the reality of the things, the more confident he is about the fact that they're going to get there. And think about the total addressable market there. When you're talking about, you know, from an investor standpoint, what can the future bring? This is huge. Like, look at the medical industry. It's enormous. And if they can start tapping into a big piece of that, even if it's for, you know, just, um, you know, spinal cord injuries, things like that, you can start getting into um, like Parkinson's, different ailments like that. And it's like, that's another huge market that they can get into to really help humanity out. That is something I absolutely love. And I, and I would really hope that they, they can make this happen. The, the last one is Starship. <laughs> sure. Because there's a lot so, happening in 2022 on Starship, right? Yes. Um, man, Starship is a hard, 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 hard project. Um, th this is the, the biggest rocket ever made. Um, it will have a thrust and, and mass uh, double that of a Saturn V, uh, which is the largest rocket to reach orbit, um, and is intended to be fully and rapidly reusable. This is a profound, um, if, if we are successful with this, which I, I think we will be, but I don't know if we'll be, be there in 2022, I hope so. Um, th this is a profound revolution in access to orbit. Um, there has never been a fully reusable orbital launch vehicle. Um, th this, is the, this, is the, this is the holy grail of, uh, of space technology. Um, it is the fundamental breakthrough that is necessary for humanity to become a space-bearing civilization. This, this, this absorbs more of my mental energy than, than probably any other single thing. Um, but but it, is, it, is so it is so preposterously difficult um, that there are times where I wonder whether we can actually do this. One of the subtleties I get from this, and Elon's mentioned it before, where he's really, you know, when he stepped down from the earnings calls and said, you know, he's kind of focusing more on SpaceX, that's really where his focus is going to be at. And obviously he's still involved in Tesla, but I think going forward in 2022, he'll set the roadmap for us at the beginning of the year and he'll kind of keep his eye on it. But Tesla's more becoming the company that is becoming self-sustaining, um, needing less and less of his help, whereas SpaceX needs more of it. Not to say that, you know, Tesla can do without Elon right now, but we're getting to that point where when a lot of people are questioning, hey, what would Tesla do um, if Elon wasn't around? They're getting closer to that point where they would still be very successful without Elon. Not there yet, but they're definitely getting there. And I think as the next couple of years go by, once Cybertruck hits the road, FSD really starts pushing, we get the $25,000 vehicle on the road. That'll be the point, I think, where Elon can step back and be like, all right, that is now uh, self-sustaining. Tesla can go, go do its own thing, and I'm really going to put all of my efforts or the majority of my efforts into SpaceX to be able to take everything to the next level for what he wants to do for humanity. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have not subscribed, please do so down below. Uh, if um, you have not seen this entire video, I did put the description, uh, put the full length in the description down below. Take a look at that. Um, he did go into a lot of other things. Uh, it just was too much for me to share altogether here, but go ahead and watch it. It was really good. Uh, nothing super new from him, but I know that we will get that information in the roadmap, uh, a Q4 earnings call. You are all awesome. Thank you so much. We will see you later.